But uh, I'm really delighted to be here, not only to, to visit Hillary, but because that was a, a commitment that we had with Jimmy when he left the bank that we will make sure that we will continue to work together. And so we had in mind of organizing this high-level global meeting and get together and agree on the way forward and strengthen our partnership. So I'm, I'm very happy, you know, because Jimmy was in the bank, so he knows the bank, so it helps a lot. Now he's in Hillary, so uh, it will be easy for us to strengthen our, our partnership. And we have a lot to do on many aspects, uh, among which the uh, link, linking research to development. This is a, a difficult subject for, for which we will need all the, the support of all the uh, stakeholders. So we had an idea and now this is being uh, concretized today. So I'm very happy that we were able to do that. And, I'm really looking forward to, to continue to, to work with, with Jimmy uh, as a friend and with the institution more globally. Um, the phase where natural resources will become scarcer and scarcer, you can already see how prices have picked up for raw materials, for feed, for energy, for fertilizer. And all this will affect the livestock sector in, uh, in many ways. Uh, and it will affect both uh, small and large scale production. And it will probably mean that the livestock sector will have to adjust to scarcities much more so than it did in the past. So there is uh, a huge need to adjust the livestock sector in order to make better use of natural resources. And the way this should be done is really focusing on natural resource use efficiency as the main uh, common denominator for trying to pull together various interventions uh, both at the policy and technology level. Well, we made our first livestock grant in 2007, and since then we've learned so much more about the huge opportunity for smallholders to improve their lives through livestock, and we just feel like this opportunity can't be ignored, and we look forward to um, continue to invest in the space. We think there are large opportunities to actually close this, what we perceive as a really large productivity gap that smallholders face by improving the health of their animals and then also by improving the genetics of their animals. So we see that as a big opportunity and also just increasing basic access, access to the resources that they need to increase the productivity of their livestock. And then if they have excess um, production to sell, making sure that they have access to markets um, in which to do that. First, uh, human health is clearly linked uh, with um, availability of milk, eggs, meat, and is a key factor, for example, to build the brain of children. Uh, there are uh, essential uh, protein and amino acids, so it is very important for human health to have animal products, particularly for children. Uh, some, we have some risk uh, linked with animal diseases, and sometimes uh, animal diseases can um, be transmitted to human. 60% of uh, uh, human pathogens are of animal origin. It is why it is very important to, uh, to make um, permanent uh, control of all the food chain from the farm to the, the plate and to have uh, um, appropriate uh, people but for example uh, veterinarians uh, controlling that or giving to the private sector the responsibility to control that while controlling the, the controllers so uh, this is really a duty of all governments to organize the, the safety of the food will actually strengthen our effort and help us in actually delivering what we set ourselves to do. We will focus and also streamline and sometimes minimize duplication where it exists and from our different strengths come together to address the issue at hand which is helping people that derive their livelihoods from livestock improve their lives. In Southern Africa we looking at enhancing uh, participation of uh, smallholder farmers in markets.
we have over 80% of the livestock in the hands of the smallholder sector. But if the, these farmers are not uh, participating or engaging actively in markets, we find that they are not uh, contributing as much as they should. So we are looking at uh, what are the constraints or what are the opportunities and how to best link these farmers to the markets and who are the actors that we sh uh, can facilitate to, to link the farmers and the different actors in the value chain. You must keep in mind we're, we're talking about a large number of people involved with livestock and that will not walk away, that will not disappear. We don't see how all these people will be absorbed in industrial or services sectors. So for many people livestock has been their livelihood and really we I think nowadays recognize that maybe in the past we looked at all smallholder livestock keepers as one crowd. I think the thinking now is a bit more sophisticated if you want, that some people will make it to become commercial. I mean the world is changing, the market chains are improving, there's investment in roads, it's in many places they can make it if you want to be successful agricultural entrepreneurs uh, produce livestock but a lot of people will probably not be able to do that particularly to think about remote drylands places like that the big change I think is that suddenly we see a lot more interest because of the high prices the private sector is coming in and wants to invest and so a lot more chances exist the prices are higher and we see a lot of interest in investing in forward and backward linkages, milk collection for example, or selling fertilizers, those are sort of things. So more and more I think we will be able to ask the private sector to do those pieces and the public sector will have to make sure that the, the rules of the game are fair, that the policies make sure that the risks are not all on the side of the smallholder when you have contract farming that sort of thing but so the instruments are changing we are having countries which have now enough money to give direct cash transfers to poor people it wasn't the case before we have new instruments to help them reduce risks like for example vaccines or insurance schemes and we have for the other ones which are going to go sort of the market route we have private sector now interested in engaging with them and doing business with them. So the landscape is changing and I think that's what's encouraging. But obviously addressing poverty is a very difficult issue, a very multidimensional problem. It's not just income, it's culture, it's opportunities. And uh, obviously it is not, uh, it is a location specific problem. We will have to look at different settings and think through how to deal with each of those. So no silver bullet, I'm afraid. Yeah. I was very pleased to have my colleagues here from the World Bank, OIE, FAO, uh, ASEAN, uh, AUI bar uh, in this consultation to look at the livestock issues and the global dimensions of it. As we are building our new strategy in Ilri, we are mindful that we need the partnerships of our international, other international partners to be involved with us. And so getting their inputs into our strategy is enormously important. They share the global space with us and they have brought many important issues to the table. So I was very pleased with the opportunity to host them and of course the quality of the deliberations. I look forward to incorporating their views into our strategy and to working very closely with them as we move forward in the future.